Hello class and welcome to Unit 9, Day 12, and today we are learning about periodic functions, specifically the sine curve. So the sine curve looks like this. We're going to graph one in a moment, but it's called the periodic function because what happens is it starts somewhere, it follows some sort of a pattern that will eventually repeat. So if we look closely, you'll see that on both sides of this graph, this exact pattern is going to be repeated. So I should be able to move this uh, over to the left and get the exact same graph, and move it over to the right and get the exact same graph. So this is called a period, and it repeats multiple times. So let's take a look at writing the graph, or making the graph. Uh, so this is our basic equation, or our parent function. This is y equals 1 sine of 1 theta plus 0. And the reason I write it this way is because the uh, formula for a sine function is y equals a sine of um, b theta plus d, or it's actually uh, b times uh, theta minus c plus d. So this is like the parameters of the sine function. Uh, we're getting into all of the mean in a moment, but the c value is essentially h, and the d value is essentially k from when we did transformations of functions. So this is the horizontal shift, and this is the vertical shift. And these are two new ones, which we'll need to understand shortly. Uh, but for now, we're working with the most basic function, so that means there's no c value, there's no d value. a and b are 1. Anyways, so in order to find the values to make our graph, we're going to do 0 through 360 which will make sense when we look at our three definitions. <clears throat> First definition is the period, which is how many degrees uh, or radians are required to complete an entire cycle of a periodic cycle. So in order to do the entire sine graph and know where to repeat it is the period. So we're going to get to that in a minute. The amplitude is the distance from the midline, which is the middle of the periodic function, to its maximum value. So we're going to see that when we look at its graph. And the frequency is the number of cycles of a periodic function repeated uh, completes in 360 degrees. So firstly, in order to find these sine values, um, because they don't have reference angles, they're just coterminal to these points on the end of the circle, we're just going to find the coordinates here. So this one is 1, 0. This one is 0, 1. Next we have negative 1, 0. And then we have uh, 0, negative 1. And if we remember carefully, it's sine, uh, it's cosine sine for our values for our circle, for the coordinates of the points on the unit circle. So it's cosine sine. So that means the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of 90 is 1. The sine of 180 is 0 again. Then the sine of negative 1, I'm sorry, the sine of 270 is negative 1 and the sine of 360 is 0 again, and then we continue to repeat. So there's a process that happens here. It goes um, 0, uh, whoops, let me close that. It goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and then this 0 is the same as this 0. So they kind of repeat at this point. So next would be 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and so on forever. So let's take a look at the graph. So if we were to graph this, um, we start at 0, 0, right? So that's uh, 0, 0. 0 degrees, 0 radians. Then we go to uh, 90 degrees, which is going to be pi over 2 radians. Okay? And as we go to pi over 2, we're going to go up to 1. So our next point on our graph, we start at 0. We then go to 1 according to our table of values. Uh, next we go to uh, pi, which is 180 degrees. So 180 degrees is pi radians. Usually the axis is labeled in radians. Um, we go back to zero. Then we're going to go down to negative one, so I'm going to add that to my uh, graph. So that's at 270 degrees, which is 3 pi over 2, or 3 90s. Okay. So that's going to come down here, and then we're going to go back up to uh, 360 degrees, which is the same thing as 0, so that's 2 pi. 
Okay, so this is our final point. And to graph any curve, you're going to need five points to indicate that you've graphed the curve correctly. After this, this graph is going to repeat again. So it's going to start here at zero, which is the same place it left off from before. It's going to go up to one, it's going to go back down to zero, back to negative one, and then back up to zero, and then it will repeat that graph. But this is the first complete cycle of this graph. So this is known as the period. So the period in the standard sine function is uh, 360 degrees, or 2 pi. Okay, because it completes the entire cycle at 360 degrees. The amplitude is the distance from the center of the graph, or the midline, as we call it, uh, to the top or the bottom. So if we go up to the top, it's a distance of 1. If we go down to the bottom from the middle of the graph, it's uh, also 1. That's the distance. Now, the normal sine curve starts going up. So when you write it in the formula, if it goes up first, it's a positive. But if it were to go down first and do the opposite, that would be a negative sine curve. So this one is a positive sine curve, but it could be a negative sine curve as well. Um, so our amplitude is 1. And the frequency is the number of, period, uh, the number of cycles that occur in 360 degrees. So from 0 to 360, there's one full cycle, so that's 1. And these are our values for our function as well. Uh, this was our a value. It's positive because the graph starts going upwards. And this is our b value, which is our frequency, um, which is 1 because it completes one full graph at this point. Um, the other value is the midline. Now, the midline is just the equation of the line that passes through the center of the graph. In other words, in this case, there was no midline included. The midline is normally our d value. So in this case, it's 0. And you'll notice the graph starts at 0. So if we were to add a, a d value, the whole graph would shift uh, by that many units, because d is, again, the vertical shift. Um, so yeah, so let's take a look at another example just to get an idea of how we're doing. So problem number one, it's just to write the equation of the graph. So firstly, let's notice that the graph is going up. So our equation is y equals a sine of um, bx plus d. Now, we're not going to include c for most problems, but c is pretty much just the horizontal shift, which you should know how to do already, but we're not going to focus on that today. Uh, so this graph goes up, comes down, and completes its cycle at 2 pi. So that means its frequency is 1. So this is the full cycle occurs by 2 pi. So that means 1 frequency fits into, the, um, into 2 pi. So our frequency is 1, and that is our b value. Um, next, the amplitude is the distance from the center to the top. So... The center is at negative 3, and that's our midline. And we're going to go up 2 units to the top. So our amplitude is 2. Now, because it is positive, um, that's our a value, but it's positive in this case because the graph starts going up. The period is how long the graph takes to reach uh, its complete cycle. So it reaches its complete cycle at 2 pi. Now. The period is not part of the formula. Now, the midline is the horizontal line that runs through the middle of this graph, which is y equals negative 3. So the midline is y equals negative 3, and that is our d value. So if we wanted to write the equation of this graph, it would be, um, let me write it over here, y equals um, 2, because that's our amplitude, and it's positive because, again, the graph started going up, as a sine curve is supposed to, uh, sine okay, of, let's see, um, the frequency was 1, so 1x, and the midline is negative 3, so minus 3. And that's the equation of this sine curve. Uh, let's try another one now, but before we do that, I'm going to show you a formula I had written towards the top of our page here. It says frequency is equal to period over 2 pi. And if you solve for period, you actually get a second equation, which is period is equal to 2 pi divided by 
frequency. Both of these equations come from just solving for period or solving for frequency. And we're going to talk about that in a second and try and explain why this makes sense. All right, so pretty much the period is the number of times the curve occurs in 2 pi. So if you take 2 pi and divide it by the frequency, you should get the um, total amount of times it fit into, that, into 2 pi. So we're going to take a look at the third example. Now, first thing to notice is our midline is at negative 2. So let's write that down, y equals negative 2. The amplitude in this case is one unit, but important to note, it's actually a negative graph because the graph starts going downwards. The frequency, how many curves fit into 2 pi? Well, 2 pi is over here. So our graph does one full cycle, two full cycles, and three full cycles. So it does three full cycles. So our equation for this graph should be y equals negative 1 sine of 3x. So it's our amplitude, positive or negative, depending on how the graph looks. The frequency, which is 3x, and then our um, midline, which was in this case negative 2. So that's what we need for that. But if we want to find the period, we have to use our formula. So the period, again, is equal to um, 2 pi divided by the frequency, which is b. So we're just going to replace that b with the frequency. So the period equals 2 pi divided by 3, or a third of 2 pi, which makes sense because normally a frequency would finish in 2 pi. So it finished in a third of 2 pi. So it finished a third of the way. So a third of 2 pi. Now remember, pi is uh, 180 degrees. So 2 thirds of that would be uh, 120 degrees, which should also make sense because it finishes three full cycles by 360 degrees. So each one of them was 120 degrees. Let's take a look at some of the other problems. Everything I don't do is left for you guys to do on your own. Um, essentially, problems 4, 5, and 6 are the same question, just writing the equation, so you can try those on your own. Let's take a look at problem uh, 9, I suppose. It's, uh, or let's do problem 10. It says, determine the minimum and maximum value for each sine function. So let's just looking at this equation here. Um, the frequency is 1, the midline is at negative 6, the amplitude is 2, and it's positive. So if I were to sketch this graph, just making a sketch of what it looks like, because it's positive, it's going to look something like this. Because the frequency is 1, it's going to complete this full cycle at 2 pi. Because, um, well, we know the frequency is 1, so 1 equals 2 pi divided by the period. So if I were to... Uh, solve for period, I would just cross multiply and I'll get period equals 2 pi over 1, which is just 2 pi. So in other words, it's going to finish this graph at 2 pi. Now, because the amplitude is 2, the distance from the center to the bottom is 2. And because the midline is at negative 6, this means this is actually negative 6. So it goes up as far as negative 4, and it goes down as far as negative 8. So this graph goes, its lowest value is at negative 8. So the minimum is negative 8, and the highest point, the maximum, is at negative 4. Other things to notice, because I'm going to give you similar questions on the, the similar questions are going to come up on the regions, is that because this graph actually doesn't stop here, it'll just keep going, it actually has a domain of negative infinity to infinity, but its range is always its minimum to its maximum. So y is going to be equal to um, whatever the midline is. So we need to know that the lowest value is the midline um, minus the amplitude, or whatever. It doesn't matter if the amplitude is positive or negative. But So the absolute value of the amplitude and the highest value, and it's going to equal that value um, up to the highest value, which will be the midline plus whatever the value of the amplitude is. So that is our, do, our range. So it goes as low as the middle mi uh, minus the amplitude, as high as the middle plus the amplitude. 
All right, if that makes sense. And the domain is always negative infinity to infinity. All right, um, problem, we're going to do problem 11 now. It says to find the period. So this is actually uh, an equation with a C value. So this is just a graph that's been shifted uh, four-thirds units to the left because a positive C would move it over. But we're not really concerned with this value because we're only concerned with how long it takes the graph to complete a full cycle. So this is our frequency. So that means we complete four-thirds of the, of the cycle by 2 pi. So if this is 2 pi, we complete four-thirds of the cycle. That means, um, that means 1 and a third. So that means we're going to complete um, a full and then another bit of the graph before that. So the period is actually something smaller than 2 pi. This is bigger than 1. Oh, wait. Hold on, let me rephrase. All right, so 4 thirds pi is, um, yeah, it completes one and a piece of the graph. So one and a, another piece of the graph. So the period is somewhere, the frequency is a little bit more than one. The period has to be less than 2 pi. So we're just going to use the formula to do this. So again, the period is equal to 2 pi, the full 360, divided by the total number of times that the cycle completes, which is 4 thirds. So if I wanted to simplify this expression, I have to uh, convert this to a fraction and then do keep change flip to simplify this. So a uh, period is going to be equal to 2 pi over 1 times the reciprocal, 3 fourths, which is going to be 6 pi over 4, which simplifies to uh, uh, 3 over 2 pi. And again, since pi is 180, that's uh, uh, 180 divided by 2 is 90. That's 270 degrees. In other words, 3 quarters of a circle is what this graph required to uh, be completed. So pretty much we took 2 pi and divided it by 4 thirds, the frequency. All right. Um, we're just going to do problem 15, and then the rest are all yours to try. You'll be able to look at all the problems on Delta Math to help you do these problems. But again, I'm going to recommend you take a look at day 13's video as well before you start doing the Delta Math, just because you need to know what a cosine curve is in order to do it. So uh, let's take a look at problem 15. So we are given that the we have a sine function with an amplitude of 4 and a midline of 5 and a period of 8 over 3 pi. Well, 8 pi over 3. So we know already that we have y equals sine. We know the amplitude is 4. Technically, we can write negative 4 as well. We know the midline is negative five, uh, is positive 5, so we're going to do a plus 5 here. What we don't know is what the frequency is. So the formula for frequency, so the b value, is equal to the period. Um, divided by, um, well, it's 2 pi divided by the period. So 2 pi divided by the period, which is 8 pi over 3. Again, I'm going to make this into a fraction so I can do keep change flip. So I'm going to get uh, 2 pi over 1 times 3 over um, 8 pi. The pi's will cancel out. And I get 6 over 8, which is 3 fourths. So this is 3 fourths x. So this completes um, 3 fourths of a curve um, in 360 degrees. It doesn't actually complete its curve until 8 thirds of pi, which is more than 360 degrees. Uh, try the rest of the problems on your own. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them on the Google Classroom or in the private comments of this assignment. And I'll see you briefly in uh, Unit 9, Day 13, to take a quick look at what the cosine curve